Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisia Antoine. This edition's top stories. The Department of Education provides a comprehensive plan for the opening of the new academic year. A quarantined national who is COVID-19 negative was hospitalized on the weekend. And modernizing the public procurement system. The Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations has finalized plans for the opening of the new academic year. The proposed date is September 7, 2020, with teachers reporting to schools on August 31, 2020. Officials say the dates are proposed given the fluid nature of the COVID-19 pandemic. The return of students to the classroom setting is being done under two formats. Option 1 is the whole school approach with the use of social distancing protocols. The students will attend school for four days in the week, Monday to Thursdays. Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer is the Chief Education Officer. The Friday will be used for planning as well as a general sanitization of the school plant. And note that all of the schools had to present their individual instructional plans. These were vetted. These were looked at by a range of individuals and agencies, including our environmental health, and approval was then given. So for parents with small school settings, where the numbers are low, we have schools with 50 students, schools with 100 students, that has been the consideration for the small schools, including both primary and secondary schools. Option two is alternate instructional days with an emphasis on assignments and student projects. We note that we have some schools with as many as a thousand children. We are primary schools with 500 children. Option one would not fit in that situation. Therefore, for those schools, we're looking at alternate instructional days. And that means that our children your child will be at school on alternate days. So quick way of example, one day in, one day out. And this is meant to ensure that we constantly have contact with the children, that they're not gone for long periods of time. But it's important to note that when we have the alternate days, the days when the children are not at school, these are meant for distributed learning activities that speaks to virtual meaning online various platforms that we've used to be able to provide work to the children as well as activity sheets project-based work chief medical officer dr sharon belma george said the decision to reopen schools was evidence-based several factors she explained were considered including the number of active covid 19 cases on island the lack of community spread along with who are the infected individuals. So all of this is just part of what we looked at and also look at how does the disease manifest in, in our people of school age, in children. And for most of them is very mild disease or asymptomatic um, disease. We also looked at what structures that we have put in place. And I, I really have to commend the Ministry of Education and how they were able to, to do the grade six and the form fives. I think it was a good dry run um, and the level of coordination and managing um, at that phase. We are going into a, a, a phase which is of higher risk, bringing all the children back, but all of those factors had to be um, put in place. Our reality is that for the next two years, we will be managing COVID. What are our options? We keep schools closed for that period of time. Looking at where we are in, in relation to the disease, looking at what we've put in place to be able to manage, we are at a point where we can safely ask the children to, to, come, to come in. And we need to look at our national situation, look at the facts and not be, um, be led by anxieties and misinformation. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma george We will be having more on the proposed opening of the school year in subsequent broadcasts. In more education-related developments, continued efforts to improve the performance of secondary school students in mathematics will take the form of increased resources for the Department of Education's Numeracy Hours Initiative. Jesse Leos has the details. 
Many secondary school students who struggle with formulas, shapes, and number-related concepts will soon be aided with mathematical tools in the classroom. The Department of Education is laser-focused on improving the national performance in mathematics at the Caribbean Secondary Examination Certificate CSEC level. In 2018, 43% of candidates who wrote CSEC in St. Lucia did not attain a passing grade in the subject. The Numeracy Hours Initiative, launched in August 2019 and piloted at the Form 4 and 5 level in four secondary schools, will continue in this upcoming academic year. Upon review of the pilot phase, more resources for the program were approved to enhance teaching methods. With the concept of, of algebra, let's say, um, it's, it's, it's rather abstract. So, but there are certain ways where, for example, certain topics in algebra, completing the square, so what we have done is that we've gotten the algebra tiles to assist those teachers and students to actually manipulate and complete the square and see how um, algebra and using the algebra tiles can relate to completing the square, the whole abstract concept of completing the square. That was the program's numeracy coach, Ian Hippolyte. In addition to algebra tiles, the Department of Education has also procured other materials, including graph boards, projectors, calculators, and geometry sets. The introduction of such apparatus follows extensive work of the intervention program at the four pilot schools. Teachers were first engaged in training, and then through the assistance of mathematics specialists, the mathematics curriculum was reviewed and a bank of lesson plans was developed to assist teachers in executing more effective classes. The okay. teacher now takes the lesson plan and um, tweaks it, develops it as to how he or she would like it for his or her particular set of students, and then I'm in the classroom observing and offering assistance when needed and necessary. Okay. And at the end of the lesson, I sit with each teacher and then we look to see how best we can make the next class more interesting and more fun and more interactive and to better achieve our goals. Hippolyte is pleased to report that after the pilot phase, all teachers involved are looking forward to the resumption of the program. All the teachers are, are on board. All the teachers are, are looking forward, I can see, to, to the assistance. Um, come this coming academic year. We're just in a bit of a limbo with this whole COVID issue and we're not sure how the, um, the procedures of school, because some schools have not decided yet as to how they're going to, to um, organize their classes. So once we have that settled, then we would know for sure how we're moving forward with our numeracy hours program. The Numeracy Hours program is funded by the Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, funded Education Quality Improvement Project, EQUIP. The Department of Education hopes to expand this program to more schools island-wide. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leons reporting. There was heightened activity of one of the government's quarantine facilities on the weekend after a returning national encountered medical difficulty. Dr. Sharon Belma george is the Chief Medical Officer. On Sunday, August 23, 2020, a 48-year-old national who returned to St. Lucia on Friday, August 21, 2020, was found unresponsive in her room at one of the national quarantine sites by the nurses during a routine review. She was rushed to the respiratory hospital via ambulance and is presently at the intensive care unit at the OKEU hospital receiving care. The COVID-19 test conducted on this patient was negative. The medical team is presently conducting the necessary investigations to determine the cause of her condition and to clinically manage her. Further updates on this patient and the national COVID-19 response will be provided. In St. Lucia, to date, a total of 5,138 COVID-19 tests have been conducted, out of which 26 confirmed cases of COVID-19 have been recorded. Of these 26 cases, 25 have fully recovered. The last case, which was recorded on Tuesday, August 18, 2020, is a repatriated national who is presently in care and stable at the respiratory hospital. The World Bank Group has received funding under the Canada Caribbean Resilience Facility, CRF. The facility was established to achieve more effective and coordinated gender-informed, climate-resilient preparedness, recovery and public financial management practices in nine Caribbean countries. 
CRF also supports countries by deploying technical experts in the region for close partnership, collaboration and just-in-time support to accelerate the implementation of recovery projects and overall resilience building efforts across the Caribbean. St. Lucia received technical assistance to undertake some of the reform activities to its public procurement system. Glenn Simon reports. Public procurement refers to the purchase of goods, services and works by governments and state-owned enterprises. It accounts for a significant portion of taxpayer revenue. Governments are expected to conduct public procurement efficiently and with very high standards to ensure quality of service delivery while safeguarding the public interest. Senior Procurement Officer in the Department of Finance, Trevor Cyril, acknowledged that in the past, procurement has not been accorded the level of seriousness that it truly deserves. He was pleased, however, to see that St. Lucia has now followed the path of the international community by recognizing the importance of the procurement function. When you look at the value of procurement on an international level, it is accounting for 12% of government expenditure. In 2018 dollars in St. Lucia, our GDP was 1.922 billion dollars. Procurement as 12% of that would work out to about $230.6 million, and that's conservative. That is a significant amount of money. And so we need to put administrative procedures and a framework in place to ensure that government taxpayer dollars are best utilized and we end up with the best outcome. With funding under the Canada-Caribbean Resilience Facility, CRF, the World Bank team undertook a review of the post-disaster public financial management in St. Lucia, of which public procurement is a key component, particularly in response to a disaster or emergency. A stock-taking exercise on public procurement was conducted with relevant stakeholders during the month of August to discuss the new systems and modalities in public procurement, such as e-procurement and legislative reform governing public procurement. Anthony Jean is the Assistant Director for Public Procurement in the Department of Finance. So it's not just only to you know, introduce flashy systems of e-procurement and new legislation, but you want the persons really impacted to, to, to feel like some sense of ownership in this, because it's not being done primarily for us, it's being done for everybody. So our stakeholders, it's important that they're on board, they understand the history, they understand what it is you know, we're doing. And importantly, again, the next steps, how it impacts on them, how it requires them to respond, and we, and we factor that into our action plans. Deputy Economist in the Department of Economic Planning, Paul Alcindor, agrees that public procurement must be given greater attention, as it represents government expenditure into the local economy, which serves to stimulate economic activity. Stock taking is very important in terms of looking at the efficiency of your, of your project, looking at what are the gaps in your project activities, what are the um, troublesome areas that needs to be addressed so you can cost correct and become more efficient to ensure that you deliver the outcome that you contemplated in the definition of your project. One of the key stakeholders in the stock take exercise was Calvin Lee, the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor. He noted that procurement is a critical aspect of the Ministry's functions, which directly impacts the Public Works program. Um, because a lot of what we do impacts the general public from the point of view that, apart from the benefit of having a good road, but the construction works, the repair works are normally done by locals. So whether they work for a large company or medium-sized one or individual um, small contractors would um, build drainage and small walls and, and that kind, all benefit from, from that. So procurement for us is critical in that the transparency of, the, the, of it, the accountability of it, it accounts for a significant portion of our annual budget. One of the recommendations emanating from the stock take exercise is increased capacity building for all stakeholders in the procurement process. In reference to the new tools, procedures and legislation necessary to modernize the procurement system. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quayol.
Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment wishes to notify all clients of the Public Assistance Program from Castries, Babuno, Grozile and Susimilet regions that payment for the month of July has commenced. On Thursday, August 20th to Friday, August 21st, 2020, payments will be made at the various locations from 9 a.m. daily. For further information, please contact the Ministry at telephone number 468-5108 Castries or 454-6478 Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novella Creole. Merci au temps à Nessir. Monsieur, Madame, département qui n'est pas responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci GIS et télévision nationale pays à NTN Capozato Nouvelle à Creole. Capozato Primus Hutchinson. Ministre qui n'est pas responsabilité pour plan des affaires physiques, ça veut dire mon yon yon ka servi terrain pour conduire diverses constructions. Assez honorable Herod Stanislas, j'ai encore renforcé le commandement du gouvernement pour protéger les droits des citoyens pour servir toute la plage et le bord de la mer pays. Le ministre Stanislas, il y a aussi un salaire encore, en résultat des de gros concerns de la public là, qui n'est pas fait et puis développement du projet CABOT en OCAP. Le même cabinet de gouvernement a pris une décision pour louer des terrains réserves pour le développement pour 75 ans. Le ministre a dit que la décision n'a pas pas capable les membres publics pour servir la plage en Kazaba. M. Stanislas de que le gouvernement savent est aussi très concerné, particulièrement la situation opération Westerwan Madri, qui a sous propriétaire pour plus de 20 ans. En l'année 2 millions, Madri Lambert a trouvé permission pour louer un morceau de terrain pour 5 ans. Pour cette main, il a loué pour seulement une année. Le ministre Stanislas a remarqué que l'affaire pour louer tes réserves, c'est une qui a opération pour plusieurs années. Kabot a présenté un grand plan et on a dit que le président de plan est en bas de l'examination et qu'il a fait ça en différentes phases. Mais le gouvernement fait dernier approval pour le développement de ça. Il n'y a pas de pièce de la pour le public la servir de bord de la mer, Kazaba. Malgré cette lucie pour qu'on espionne la mort en résultat de la fièvre dengue, la jeune a un appel pour que le public la continue pour prendre bonne précaution parce que dans les autres pays, plusieurs personnes ont perdu la vie par mauvais la fièvre. Le chef officier pour le département de l'environnement de santé, Park Ragnanen, dit que le département a commencé à travailler dans plusieurs communes à cette lucie pour aider ce pays là à ce avec le public là à ce démarche et à ce point conduire la fièvre ça là. So, nous allons continuer à travailler avec différentes organisations. Nous allons continuer pour indiquer cette liste à ce malade et à ce migrant ça là parce qu'il est important pour nous de savoir ça pour faire. Nous allons continuer pour aller caille la caille par caille et nous allons faire examination ces cailles là. Gardez ces lanières pièces côté um, um, la pièce côté qui est de l'eau côté migrant ça ça prend et fait pitié nous a éduqué c'est même qu'il a ça pour faire pour abattre um, au lieu de qu'il a from ces um, breeding sets dans nos pays um, nous a continué um, treat c'est là nous a mis des fois qu'un mécan de l'eau pour tuer ces um, c'est hiver, c'est hiver, c'est hiver, c'est Chef officier a annoncé aussi que le département a passé à ces communes qui ont plus haut risque de la fièvre là et qui n'ont pas fumé, particulièrement pour les soirées, pour essayer de contrôler la population. Côté nous, nous avons fait un effort pour nous attuer ces maigres qui ont volé en place là. Donc, dans ça, c'est un effort. Nous avons travaillé avec chaque différentes places de business aussi pour voir qui est qui est manager, ils ont dit qu'ils bien, et qu'ils n'ont pas qu'à faire un environnement côté maïgouin qui vivent. Donc, nous avons fait ces bagages là. Donc, nous voulons continuer pour éduquer ce lycée à voir maïgouin ça là, et pour nous dire que tout ce lycée est pour faire, pour faire ça, il n'y a pas de faire. 
pour protéger quoi yo. Travail bien avancé pour placer l'hôpital Victoria en position pour opérer quoi yo l'hôpital pour traiter maladie étouffement. Ministère de santé car travail puis pour que l'hôpital ça a commencé opération bon mois septembre l'année ici. Côté au cas ça tu à capacité de yon sa couche. Depuis le l'hôpital Owen King commencé au pouvoir au pouvoir en mois de mars l'année ici. Et fort pour placer l'hôpital Victoria en dégoué yon l'hôpital pour traiter maladie étouffement qui marche très bien. Selon le ministre des Affaires de Santé, on a sénateur Mary Isaac, qui a coûté le gouvernement en l'eau l'argent, ça veut dire en pile dépense pour établir l'hôpital ça là, et principalement pour poursuivre le service de traitement. Tout ça, c'est parce que la maladie de Corona a fait ses pèses de responsabilité ça là à sous cette ci Mais le ministre de la Santé a déclaré que le gouvernement n'a pas fait gros effort ça là parce que ça c'est une façon de faire ça fait bataille contre la maladie de Corona ça là. Madame Isaac dit que la situation arrive à suivre subitement et qu'il tenu pour chercher assistance finance hors de budget avec le ministère des Finances. Mais il est satisfait pour la manière de travailler qui avancé et puis satisfaction. Le directeur qui est responsable pour l'opération en total pour ni l'hôpital OKIO et Victoria explique qu'il y a travaillé qui a adressé ce morceau de travail qui est très sensible et qui peut faire en façon qui doit être. Mme Nancy Francis dit qu'il est ingénieur, toujours en consultation et puis Banque mondiale avec les professionnels, toujours qu'il y a une consultation par de la place de travail pour l'examiner par son travail qui a marché pour si un cas, il y a une pièce de difficulté, il y a adressé immédiatement. C'était pour le gouvernement pour tenir l'hôpital Victoria au pour qu'il y ait une polyclinique pour replacer Wellness Center Castri, mais le sénateur Isaac dit qu'il y a une condition que COVID mette le pays à présentement d'avoir une pièce plan pour aller en direction. Ça là. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons une nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas considérer qu'on se fait la vie. Et nous avons une autre nouvelle à créer à la présent. Je vous remercie pour cette autre année. Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anisia Antoine.